What's up YouTube, this is iTweaks here, and today I wanted to show you guys the top 20 Cydia tweaks for the iPad. And it's going to take a while, so let's jump right in. The first one we have here is Mountain Center, and what this does is give you an OS X style notification center on the right side of your iPad. So you can just slide from the right, opens right up, and you can see all your notifications here on the right side, rather than it being in the middle and just kind of popping down in the middle like iOS usually has it. And I didn't really like that, and this just looks a whole lot more built into the iOS. Alright, so next up we have iFile, and what this allows you to do is actually gain access to all the files on your iPad. It's basically like Finder for your Mac, except this is for your iPad. So this allows you to change or customize any sounds or pictures or pretty much anything to your liking. So like I just showed you, you can click on the applications and go into uh, Candy Crush or whatever app you want to, and you can change the sounds, you can change the pictures, you can do whatever you want. I mean, and that's what's so cool about iFile, is that it gives you unlimited customization ability and it's even necessary for some theming options so if you like to download themes from Winterboard and uh, you need to change the picture or you need to change the the weather widget to the location that you're actually in then iFile is a must so you should definitely check it out and here we have Safari Download Manager and what this allows you to do is actually download files from the internet and it allows you to manage them. It's all in the name really. So if we click on the 5 megabyte file here you'll see that you can change the download destination but just for time's sake we're just going to click download and you can see there's a little badge icon up in the top. We're going to click on that. You can see the status of it. You can cancel it. You can see how fast it's going and all that good stuff and when you click on it it actually allows you to open it up in any file manager like iFile or Dropbox that you have on your device. So if you need a way to manage your downloads, then give this a shot. So these next two tweaks allow you to customize your keyboard, and they are iKiwi HD and Color Keyboard HD. So if I swipe over to the spotlight, you'll see that obviously the color of the keyboard has changed, and I have a whole new row of characters up at the top. So let's go ahead and go into the settings here, and I'll show you exactly what these two tweaks can do. First, let's go to Color Keyboard, and you can see that it has a, quite a bit of options here. You can select the pop-up key, the customized backgrounds, all that good stuff. But the real main thing is the themes, and these are all themes that come with it, except for the very top one, the Ambriel iPad one. You can download custom ones if you want to do that as well. You can change the keyboard radius or keyboarder radius, I'm sorry, but I never really mess with that. So let's go to iKiwi HD and this is where you customize your keys. As you can see here, I changed key 1 to a P just to show you guys that it does actually work and you can change the uh, alternate keys as well if you want to do that. So let's go back to the spotlight and I'll show you that the P actually did work. If we turn off the shift, you can see there's the P. So if you want to change your keyboard up a little bit, give it a little fresh new look, then definitely check out iKiwi HD and Color Keyboard. Next up we have Hook's Law. And as you can see when I slide to unlock my phone, you get this springy effect here. So if we click on uh, a couple of these apps, you can see that they open really quick and they close really quick and you can see that they spring a little bit there at the end. So if we actually go into the settings here and we click on the Hooks Law settings, you're going to see that you can change some of the stuff, but it might not be to your best interest to do that. I mean, the default settings are the best, so let's go ahead and change the velocity just to give you guys kind of a, an idea what this does. Uh, when I close out, see, it kind of goes a little crazy. So, I mean, it the... If you figure out how to do it, how you balance it and everything, then that's great too. Uh, what I've noticed when I've messed with it is that leaving it on default is actually probably the best uh, situation that you can have. And it's, it's what looks the best. So if you want to mess with it, then go ahead. But definitely give this a shot. It's a really cool effect and it's worth grabbing from Cydia. Here's an awesome tweak if you type on your iPad a lot, and it's called Swipe Selection. And what it allows you to do is slide from the left or right, and it moves your cursor over to wherever, whichever way your finger's going. You can even slide from the Shift key like I just did and highlight. So if I just type here, hi there, YouTube, and then let's say I wanted to change something. Let's say that I just want to swipe over there, swipe back, and I want to change it to, hi, this is iTweaks YouTube. So let's go ahead and type that out. Hi, uh, this is iTweaks YouTube. Let's put a comma there. Golly. Hi, this iTweaks YouTube. That's not great. I never said I was smart, but here we go. If I highlight from the, or if I slide from the shift key, I'll just delete the whole thing and forget it ever happened. So, swipe selection if you use the keyboard a lot. Check it out. 
All right, next up we have Display Recorder. And what this allows you to do is actually record the springboard or whatever you're doing on your iPad. So, I mean, people use this for YouTube videos, as you can see here. I've made a few, but I didn't actually end up uploading them just because I like this look a whole lot better. But all you have to do is hit that little plus button and it starts recording. And as you can see, you can swipe and you can see the impression of my finger when you're touching the screen and everything like that. And it works pretty seamlessly. The uh, You can change the FPS to to the highest and that way it actually looks like uh, it's not too jittery or anything like that so let's go back into the uh, display recorder and we're gonna stop the recording you have the option to delete it if you know you screwed up or something like that you can upload it you can rename it you can add it to the camera roll or anything and you can see that it works pretty well I mean you see the impression you see what I was doing so if you want to use this for YouTube videos or you need to show your parents how to set up their email on their iPad and you can't really go to them and do that you can just record a video and send it to them so check it out so if you use folders a lot on your iPad then folder enhancer is for you as you can see here I got five icons in here but you usually can't make a folder inside a folder well within folder enhancer you can you can do that you can make folders inside of folders you can make folders inside of folders inside of folders you can make pages in your folders and you can put as many apps or icons in the folder that you want and it works seamlessly it's really nice and I mean this is what iOS should be. There shouldn't be a limitation on the number of apps or folders inside your folder. So definitely check it out. So you have this bright idea that you're going to change the way everything is organized on your iPad, but you don't really want to move one app or icon at a time from page to page. So you need multi-icon mover. As you can see here, all you have to do is make the apps wiggle. You select them just by tapping them. It'll give you a little checkbox, and then you can put them wherever you want and whatever page you want. If you have Folder Enhancer, it even works in folders. So you can see that I'm just selecting these, I'm hitting the home button, and they're magically appearing. And it makes moving and organizing a thousand times faster so definitely check this out so next up we have Zephyr and if we go into the settings here you can see I've already clicked on it you can swipe from the left and right swipe up from the bottom system gestures I mean you got all these options you can even turn on a grabber if you want to so you don't accidentally swipe when you're in an application or something like that and you can change the number of fingers you can change the sensitivity you can even disable some applications like games and stuff so you don't accidentally swipe out of your game while you're while you're playing and really all it takes is just a swipe of the finger and it switches through the applications that you have open on your iPad and I mean it's really nice it makes multitasking extremely simple you can even close apps just by swiping up from the bottom like that and when you're on the springboard swipe up from the bottom and you get the app switcher so that's Zephyr it's awesome give it a shot here we have password pilot and it's extremely simple but it's extremely useful so if we go into the settings here all you have to do is type in your password it then encrypts it and then saves it that way when you go into the app store and you want to download an application like I'm about to right now let's say I want to download NCAA and I install it there it is it's already saved in there all I have to do is hit OK so I don't have to type it in or anything like that now this isn't probably good if you have kids and you let them use your iPad because they'll end up blowing up your credit card bill but other than that it's a great tweak Alright, so next up we have Universal Video Downloader. And what it allows you to do is if you open up an application like YouTube and you see my video here and you want to download it, watch it offline or something like that, then you're able to download it straight to your device through this app. All you have to do is give it a video name and we'll just call it Tweaks here. And you'll see that there's a full quality button right there and you can just click on that to keep it as full quality. And then you up at the top, you hit the download button and then it's going to go to all the videos that you already have. So if you click on the download, you can see the progress of it. You can delete it. You can pause it. You can manage it however you need to. And let's just go ahead and uh, delete this one because I don't really need this. And then once it's done deleting, we'll go ahead and click on the apps icon down here at the bottom. And you just click on enable on all apps. That way that if there's a video in an app that you're using that you want to download, it works on all the apps that it's compatible with. So here in the settings, you have full quality only, the default audio. And I mean, basically, that's all there is to it. So if you need to download a video, then definitely check out Universal Video Downloader. 
Believe it or not, there's still some applications out there that aren't Retina ready. So if you click on, let's say, uh, Fruit Ninja here, this is actually the iPhone edition, but you can see the, the one times and two times down there at the bottom, and you can see the real jagged edges of the fruit on the game. So the way that I'm going to fix this is by using Retina Pad and full force. So let's go ahead and go to Retina Pad. We're going to turn that on for Fruit Ninja and then go to full force and then turn that on as well. So now all we have to do is close the application. And once we close the application, just open it back up. And you can see, first of all, that it did start in full, uh, <laughs> it used full force and started in full screen. And it got a little smaller, but it's going to get bigger again. It's just how it loads, basically. So once it's done loading, you'll see that it is full screen completely and it's a whole lot nicer. The edges are a whole lot smoother, so it looks a whole lot better. And this is what you can use if you just happen to have an iPhone app on your iPad or if you have an application that just doesn't support Retina. Then you need to check this out. Next up we have Emblem and what it does is give you an OS X type notification style. As you can see up here in the top right corner you have a close and launch feature for the Gmail application. Now if I actually send myself a text message here you'll see that it's going to pop up in the right corner just like that but it's not going to give me a close or launch button it's just going to pop up and then it's going to slide away. And the other cool thing about this is if you actually get four messages within a short period of time then you're able to scroll through it just like that so I'll show you you slide through just like that and you can click on them if you need to just to uh, to open it up but I mean that's basically all that it does but it's a really cool type of notification so if you like the notification style on OS 10 then definitely check this out now activator has been around forever but it's still one of the best apps or in tweaks that you can get so basically what it does is it allows you to do all these types of gestures to uh, assign them to whatever you want to so what you can see here I mean you got the home button you can do all types of gestures for the home button you can do it with motion the multi-touch gesture the power sleep button slide in gesture springboard status bar I mean there's a ton of stuff that you can do I mean you can even do a wired headset so I mean just to show you guys just one uh, application that it can do let's just go ahead and do the triple press for the home button and then we'll do uh, lock the device so you can kind of get an idea of what this does so all I'm gonna do is hit the home button three times whoops I missed it and then it locks the device there so I mean that's what it does I mean there's a ton of stuff that you can do you can make it close applications just by squeezing and you can pinch icons you can spread them out you can do whatever you want to and it's really cool and obviously one of the top tweaks for the iPad most people already know about Barrel, but if you don't, this is why it's in this video, is for you to discover it. It is an awesome tweak, and what it allows you to do is change the animation that it takes place when swiping from page to page. As you can see here, this is Carousel, and I mean there's a ton of different modes that you can choose from. So let's go ahead and try the page zoom just to show you another one, and this one makes it come straight at you or go away from you depending on which way you're going. Now this is an awesome tweak and definitely recommend it. It is a must have for even iPhones, iPads, iPods. Give it a shot. What would a top 20 tweaks video for iPad be without Spring to Mize 2? Not very much because Spring to Mize is like 30 tweaks in one, probably even more than that. There's a ton. And one of the coolest features about this is the more option down here at the bottom. You can click on the documentation and you can select the section that you're having a problem with. If you don't understand what exactly the feature does, then you can read what it does right here. So disable the camera button just disables the camera button on the lock screen. So I mean, there's a ton of stuff and this is huge when it's coming to uh, trying to figure everything out. So you can go into the animations here, you can change that up. Let's just go into dock here and let's change the uh, cover flow let's enable that and we'll turn on the custom number of 10 icons in the dock as well as click on the icon we'll resize all our icons and we'll change the number of portrait and landscape icons on the springboard so let's just go ahead and go back and we'll, we will apply these changes by clicking default you usually don't do this you'll usually respring it but I just did this for uh, uh, time's sake here and you can see that it changed all the icons, made them a whole lot smaller, and it changed the number of icons on the springboard as well as added a cover flow effect to the dock. And you can put the 10 icons in there, like I said, that I changed. And just to show you, I got 8, 9, 
there's tin. So, I mean, there's a ton of stuff that you can do with Spring Tomize 2, and I wish I could just spend an hour on it telling you all this awesome stuff that it does. But for time's sake, I won't do that. And for your sake and my sake, I won't do that. But uh, definitely give Spring Tomize 2 a shot. It's definitely worth every penny. Here we have SB settings, and what this allows you to do up here, if you swipe up the top, you can see that it gives you a ton of toggles. And the brightness one is the huge one for me, but you got refresh, the dock, respring, power, more, location processes, 3G, I mean everything that you could possibly want. And the other cool thing about it is that it's actually in your notification center as well. So it gives you all those toggles and you can use them straight from your notification center or your springboard depending on which one you're in. So if you want to have easy access to these awesome toggles, then download SB settings and check it out for yourself. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you're awesome and you want to help me out, go ahead and click that like button. If you want to see more of my videos, then go ahead and subscribe to be a part of this awesome growing community that we have going on here. Also, don't forget to like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter for updates. It's still pretty lonely on both of those, so definitely go check it out. Alright guys and gals, until next time, peace.